As part of my regular job, I carry a flashlight around all the time. It comes in handy. And I wanted a more convenient way to carry it. So I'm going to make a leather... It's not quite a case. It's just going to be a belt loop, basically. But it'll snap on with a spring clip onto a belt. And just be a more convenient way than throwing this and having it rattle around in my pocket. And we're going to shoot from the hip a little bit more on this project than normal. Um, it's not that important to get it exactly right. I'm just going to cut a piece about two inches wide. That's going to be my um, back piece of it. There we go. And we're going to make that at least as long as the flashlight. We're going to cut a piece to line it. We're going to put the holes in the clip for it. And then we're going to make pretty much just a large cartridge loop that's going to hold the flashlight. Now just because I don't like having square corners on things, we're going to go ahead and take a little corner template thing. And we're going to round those out a little bit. I like a lot of times when I'm cutting, rounding out corners with the round knife, I just roll it and make a bunch of little cuts. I found it a lot easier to stay on the lines and not cause any trouble like that. Alright, and then where we're going to put the spring clip. Let me mark that, that, that. Use an eighth inch hole punch. need to be what's going to be our cartridge loop. Now I just so happen to have something in my scrap bin that was just the right size for this particular flashlight. It even has holes punched on either side and I could check and that's going to fit just perfect. These were left over there. The leather was crinkly and cracky and doesn't look very good. So I decided to just toss them, throw them in the scrap bin and uh, remake what I was making. But they're actually, somebody was asking for a cartridge belt, like a cowboy action style shooting belt, uh, gun belt. But instead of wanting regular cartridge loops on it, he wanted loops that would hold magazines for a 1911 pistol. And that's what these actually were made to fit. But as I said, they didn't turn out the way I wanted them to, so I had to redo them anyway. And they just wound up in the scrap bin. But the reason I have a scrap bin is because sometimes stuff in it comes in handy. Even if I don't think I would ever use it, it still sometimes goes in there and winds up being useful for something like this. But I am again just going to use this as a pattern because I don't like the way it's going to turn out. So I'm cutting a piece out of four to five ounce. That's the same length as this. Mark where the holes are. corners off a little bit. Now 
Um, I wanted to pan stitch this, so I'm going ahead and using uh, these stitching chisels, which are, they're sometimes called pricking irons, they're diamond hole chisels, they've got several different names. They're a very convenient way to punch a lot of holes fast for hand stitching. of this piece. Yeah, it's gonna be big enough. Yeah, it might be big enough to be our liner. Liners oversized. Touch up the color on our cut edges here. Then I'm going to wet this down so that I can shape it a little bit. And we're going to start stitching. We're going to stitch it together basically to where it's going to fit about like that. And I'll start over here and I'll just stitch all the way around. 
and work this in whenever I get to it. And I'll just be hand stitching this one. I normally do a lot of stuff on the machine, and I would probably do this on the machine, but anytime I do cartridge loops, I usually hand stitch them, and that's basically what I'm doing here. So that's why I went ahead and punched all the holes to hand stitch. Your light needs to sit about there. That means about this hole here needs to be the top of the uh, loop. Now my usual method of doing a two needle saddle stitch like this on simple items is just that I pull the thread down and back that I've just worked with. I'll grab the other one and I always work pretty much from this side. I'll make sure that it winds up over top. That's why I pulled that one down. Pull it through nice and tight. And then up out of the next hole. And then that thread gets pulled down into the side. And I go back to the other one. There's a lot of ways this can be done, but this is the one I find easiest and works well for me. Other people don't like it. They'd prefer to have a stitching pony or something to hold the piece so they can work with both threads at the same time. It all kind of depends on what you get used to as you do some of it. This is where we're going to work our loops back into it. And you'll notice my loops are hanging, the leather hangs out past the edge here. I'm planning on trimming that later. I found over the years that if you try to get it an exact fit, you're usually going to miss by just a little bit. So it's easier just to leave it long and plan on trimming. You just got to go back and dye the edge before you finish it up. Now because this piece is two pieces glued together, lined, I'm going to finish stitching all the way around. Uh, if you did this out of just one piece on the back, you'd have the metal clip showing, or you'd have rivets or something, however you attach it. And I don't like that particular way of doing things, I'd rather line it. But that means I have to stitch it more if I line it. Because you can't count on glue holding it together for more than a year or two usually. At least that's been my experience. Alright, and we're back where we started. Now, I've seen people do all sorts of crazy. They tie knots or they try to tie knots between layers. And that's just wrong. Um, because a knot is just going to come untied or it's going to wear out. It's not going to hold. 
the best way to finish off stitching is just to back stitch three or four holes and then that end has to pull tighter and add more friction before it can pull out all those holes and it'll lock it in and it'll stay but if you tie a knot it'll eventually just come apart it is harder to back stitch through the holes because it'll be a lot tighter fit now so you might need a pair of pliers to pull the thread through it's working fairly well for me today though And once you got it back stitched, you just trim it off. Alright. Just trim our leather to match. knife for that or just a pair of shears like this. Use everything up a bit. Make sure our light fits the way I wanted it to. And this is, as usual, our gum drag again. Burnish the edge. And we'll let that dry and see what it looks like. Okay, and this has had a chance to dry. It's all set. To its natural color that it should be. One thing is that if you push down the top, kind of roll it in a little bit, that'll help with retention on it so that the flashlight doesn't just fall out if it's ever upside down. Not that it should ever be upside down on my belt. I don't tend to hang out upside down very much. I do like using the spring clips on things like this because not only can I clip it on my belt, but I can clip it on a pocket or a waistband or even on some loops on the side of the backpack that I've made for myself. 